Well, good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino, and we're looking at a beer that was from the August edition of the Greener Futures Project Phase 3, as facilitated by the Brew Box. This is their second actual uh, Greener Futures beer. This is Silver Fern, and Silver Fern is Kuru Belgian Style Pale Ale. Uh, aged in white wine barrels. Bang. So this is what? It's 6.3% alcohol by volume. It's been aged for four months. Yeah, four months. Local spring water, organic barley malt, organic hops, brewer's yeast. Best brewery out of Quebec. Um, now for me, I was not a fan of Kuru, to be honest with you. I didn't like the taste of it. I also thought it was way overpriced for what I was getting. Um, just being honest in this opinion. Uh, now, you figure you get eight bo bottles of beer in your brew box in phase three. And of those eight bottles of beer... Two of them are these guys. Then you get whatever the seasonal is at the time, whatever the seasonal Gruit is at the time. Um, usually, uh, well, there's a guest beer, then one other specialty beer, and then a lug tread. Uh, so you're looking at, uh, on average, because it's an $80 box, but that is with shipping and tax, uh, but it's still an $80 box. You have to figure it was $10 a beer. Uh, what uh, Lug tread itself is, what, $4 a beer? So the, the other ones end up being uh, $76 for the other seven. A lot of times it actually works out that it's kind of okay, especially the fact that it's being delivered to you, so you don't have to drive to Van Cleek Hill or to Toronto to get it. Uh, and yeah, a lot of times I'm big on, on what they do. But what, this beer was, what, 7 or $8 on its own when it was first released? So then you yeah, barrel aged, and this one must be worth like 10 to 12 if you bought it on its own now. However, this is what I will say about Bo's Phase 3 August edition. The two beers they put in the case that were their barrel aged versions were just a specific beer aged in a specific barrel. There was no fucking blending of 15 different beers or 12 different barrels or this and that. So you actually get to see what that barrel does to that beer instead of just having a mishmash of everything. And I mean, I, some people would think that, you know, mishmashing it all together would make you think that, hey, they put more thought into it, but for, in my mind, when you mishmash like 15 different beers together, well, it, usually it's no more than four to six, but when you mishmash all those beers together, it almost looks like you didn't try and you just threw everything together. A um, little bit of haze, beautiful orangey color, bright white head, slight off-white hue to it. No snap, crackle, pop, really. Like the tiniest amount. That head's going to stick around for a bit. Scent. Like cinnamon and oak tannins out of the head on that. Out of the bottle of the silver fern. Okay, you get those oak tannins, you get a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of grape, that cinnamony scent, a little bit of cloves, and a sugariness. Let's try it. Cheers! Very minimal carbonation. Almost to the point of a cask ale. It almost is that silky smooth cask ale like feeling. Light to medium bodied. Very, very light for what you'd expect, but then it is barrel aged, so that it does take some of the body away. Cloves, 
touch of cinnamon, touch of allspice, a touch of caramel, grapes, just an oaky, oaky dryness, almost like a, almost like a tongue depressor on the back of your tongue. Then a tiny touch of vanilla. No alcohol warming, no alcohol burn. It's only in the 6% range, so you wouldn't expect one. But it does end up making it so that you could drink more of it, because there isn't really one. The finish really is full on that oaky, oaky, like, just oaky dryness. That tongue depressor taste, like... I, uh, I'm sure most of you used to uh, have popsicles too, like popsicle peat and all that. When you were done eating your popsicle, you'd just, you know, slap your tongue a couple times with it or suck on the stick or something because you're an idiot. Yeah, that, that just drying, woody flavor just envelops the back of the tongue. That being said, the f everything up until then is fucking awesome. It almost has a, it almost has a Brett-like funk to it as well. It, it's an interest, it's an intriguing beer, it's an interesting beer, and it isn't as all out as a lot of the a lot of the blends have ever been. I actually don't mind this. I like this more than I like the Kuru on its own. Do I think I would buy this on its own, the Silver Fern? Probably not, but I still think it's a nice beer. I would give this a 7 out of 10. This is a solid beer. It's a solid beer. It doesn't really come off as a pale ale, to be honest with you. It's more reminding me of a of a Saison than anything else, maybe a grisette, uh, but yeah, a saison, like just, like a, a brett saison is what I'm getting off of this, I'm getting a brett saison feel out of this, so all these flavors mixed together are coming off that way. It's not a bad beer. I've been impressed with the August edition, I'll be honest, the August edition has impressed me. Thank you very much, YouTube. Have a wonderful evening. Au revoir. I'll be in tow. See you soon. Bye-bye.